Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my hardware guide series, and today we're going to be talking about the Sega Saturn. So, I'm discovering more and more that there are people out there that know less about the Sega Saturn and how it's not exactly a common system for people to have in their collections. Uh, this actually surprised me quite a bit, uh, but me and my friends, we were, we were collecting video games and old systems and stuff like that um, back in the mid to late 90s. So my viewpoint is a little bit different. Uh, I was not exactly a day one subscriber to the Sega Saturn. I saw it day one, and then I saw the price tag. And back then I was a little kid, and I didn't make enough that thing. Uh, I was I was scraping by on a Super Nintendo. Um, and, I, and I'd never even really owned a, Saturn, uh, a Sega system at all. So... You know, that, that kind of sticker shocked me away from it originally. Uh, later, when I got into college, I started collecting, you know, I, I had a better job. And I started branching out and collecting many, many more systems. And I'm happy to say that I collected a Sega Saturn, uh, like, early 2000s, I believe. But uh, doing that... You know, at the time, I actually worked at a used video game store, and I got to learn a lot about the Saturn and how to take it apart and how to uh, swap power supplies and stuff like that. Yeah, very, very basic, you know, only turn screws and, and like, glorified part swapping kind of repairs. So I, I got to become, you know, fairly intimate with a lot of the in, inner workings of it. Uh, I'm definitely not an electrical engineer or anything like that, so I, you know, I don't know the 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 proper amount of voltage and the ohms and all of that stuff. But I do know enough to help you at a help uh, all of my viewers or any other gamer out there that wants the help on a hardware guide of what to basically expect with these things. So originally, the Sega Saturn, there are two versions of it. And then there's more versions that have, you know, higher price. But your basic two are going to be the version one and the version two. Version one have the oval buttons. And uh, these are fairly reliable with the exception of their power supplies. I've heard a lot of people complain about how the power supplies on these get faulty very quickly and how uh, the power supplies on these things start to run hot really fast. And yes, I've experienced that. I've seen lots and lots of these power supplies get way too hot very fast. And you know, it, it's a shame. I have to say that it's, it's an absolute shame to watch a Saturn die because of power supply. Uh, the version 2 has round buttons. Uh, they also, you know, tend to be a little bit more reliable than the version ones, especially the power supplies. And, you know, the, the, the ones in America were you know, only released in black for the most part. There might be some sort of like super rare thing that I've never heard of, but you know what? I've never heard of it. Uh, now onto the controllers. The version one has, this is, this is a bad control. It's it's not great. I tried playing with one. Um, the way that the shoulder buttons kind of rock in and stuff like that, it just it didn't feel comfortable to hand. It looked more like someone had taken a superhero mask and decided to design a controller around it, and it just it doesn't it doesn't feel right. Uh, the directional pad is oddly shaped. Um, honestly, if someone was going to sell me a Sega Saturn these days and they included a free version one controller, I would tell them to keep the version one. Save me money on shipping. I was buying it on. I just, I don't like it. It's just me. 
the version two controller, really good design. They they finally like just they fixed it. Actually, I think this is like the the only version of the controller in Japan. Speaking of Japan, the Japanese white controller with the multicolors are gorgeous. I got one online, and I I had it shipped over, and yes, it was yellowed out as could be. I did not care. I I turned around and got some uh, Salon Forty and a black light kit. Or, you know, with a box and inside of a reflective box and stuff like that. And I I retrofitted that. I did not care. I wanted a Japanese version 2. They are great. They're great for fighters. They're great for shmups. The, the D-pad feels good. It feels good in your hand. Uh, it's got a six button on the face. You know, the controller cable length is a little short on both of these designs, but... Come on, guys. It's you know, think of the times. You know, this is this back then. You had short controller cables. It was just the way it is. No one did ten feet. You had to buy some sort of extend extender to get longer. Uh, now, on with the cables or hookups, uh, guys. Go with S video or better. Now. With some of these cables, the audio is actually going to be reversed. And that's just because uh, a lot of schematics accidentally had it reversed on the Sega Saturn for the pinouts on left and right audio. Not a big deal. All you have to do is remember to swap them when you're hooking them up to your, your TV, and you'll be fine. Uh, now, there are better cables out there than S-Video, and some of those cables are going to have the audio left and right correct. So you have to take a game like Street Fighter Alpha or something like that, where you know when you throw a Hadouken and you're standing on the left-hand side of the screen, that should be coming out of the left channel on audio. So you just have to go through and check that. Not the end of the world, but it's just something to look out for. The next thing is the power cable. Honestly, if a system came, if, if you get a Saturn without a power cable, it's not a big deal. It's your basic figure eight, two prong power cable that you see that plugs into old blenders and stuff like that. Just make sure that you take a look at the back of the console before you go to Walmart, spend six bucks, come home and have a working Saturn. The big thing with the Saturn is make sure it can read discs. There's a lot of Sega Saturns out there where either the optical lens is dirty or the pickup has been completely burned out. You can replace them. Is it easy? Not so much. Um, you have to take apart quite a few things, some of which are actually fairly delicate. Uh, you can rip cables and stuff accidentally. So, if you're clumsy, don't do it. If you're not clumsy, and you know you've, you've done things by taking apart uh, you know, electronics in the past, and you've put them back together, and they still work. You might be okay, but still proceed at your own risk. So, all of that, we'll get on with some of the more interesting peripherals. But first, we're going to talk about the one big elephant in the room for the Saturn. That is the battery saves. The Sega Saturn does not use memory that does not require voltage. What that basically means is on, a, on the back compartment of a Saturn, there's a little door. Sometimes the door is missing. Um, it's not that big of a deal. You can actually get some 3D printed. And they look okay. But behind that door, is a CR32 battery. This battery is responsible for the clock and for keeping your game saves. This battery runs out really fast, especially if you leave the system and unplug. Now, if you leave the system plugged up, it'll drain a little bit slower, but it'll still drain. Uh, this means that the Sega Saturn does take vampiric power. Basically what that means 
is that when it's plugged up, it is constantly drawing a low amount of power to keep your game saves going. Now, there are modifications out there called the FRAM mod, where you basically take off the old chip for, for memory and you put a new one in. And I think it will save for, I don't know, like 30 years or something like that. Um, but there's also the external memory cartridges and stuff that you can plug into the top back of the system. And those hold memory for quite a bit longer. Um, so you know, if you're worried about your game saves, pick up a memory card. It'll plug back into the back of the system. You might have to play with it a little bit to get it recognized, but it's worth it. Now, back to the controllers or the extra controllers. There are light guns. Um, light guns are great. They do require CRT. Uh, they also require an older CRT that is not 1080, uh, that is not a 1080 screen. If you have a HD comb 1080 screen CRT, I don't think any of your light guns are going to work. The next thing to talk about is the twin stick. This is only released in Japan, but they released a lot of them. They are not rare. If someone's trying to charge you an exorbitant amount of price, which I think is like basically anything over 70 bucks for some twin sticks, tell them they can keep their twin sticks. Um, it's They're just not worth that much money. Uh, then there's the Saturn steering wheel. This is kind of hit or miss depending on how the game wants to interpret the analog input from the steering wheel. It's... Um, I haven't really run into any games that handle it too well. I have tried Daytona with my steering wheel, and it's okay. Um, I generally just kind of stick with the gamepads stuff for Daytona. Uh, there's, speaking of gamepads, there is the 3D gamepad. That thing is wonderful. I absolutely love it. Actually, my go-to for the Sega Saturn I just, it, it fits more comfortably into my hand, um, and the L and R uh, analog sticks are just great, and it, it's just for me. Last up is the fight sticks. Uh, there are multiple, multiple fight sticks, but there is one in particular, and, and I actually have this one, that is the American version uses a plastic shaft for the fight stick as opposed to the Japanese version that uses a metal shaft. This plastic shaft one will actually uh, bend rather e easily, and I actually had to use a uh, clamp to get it to go straight again, and then I did some plastic welding with a very poor uh, Oh, what was it? A, a very poor soldering iron that was basically a six dollar soldering iron that you shouldn't use on electronics uh, to heat the plastic up, add plastic to it, and just basically try to you know get it to straighten back out. Now, not all of the uh, aid sticks are made equal. Honestly. I've got a, a third-party one that looks like a little kidney bean version of the thing. And it's great. And it has turbo functions, and it's a lot of fun. And I love it. Um, there are a lot of really good fighting games and a lot of really good shmups that play very well on a fight stick. And it's great. I love it. Well, that's pretty much going to be it for me on, on the hardware guide. On the hardware guide. For the Sega Saturn. Uh, I hope you guys can go out there and find one that will fit your needs and fit your budget. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.